Hey everybody, Josh Sigurdsson of World Alternative Media here, and with the insanity of what we're seeing in the news regarding Syria, I figured I'd give you a timeline breaking down this issue and show you this apparent chemical attack in Syria was indeed a false flag. In 2013, I bullhorned in the street about how Assad did not gas his own people as it was making headlines across the board that this was a false flag, an attempt to go to war and create a new Al-Qaeda. Sure enough, the US armed and funded ISIS and we know how that turned out. Later on, it was found that there was no evidence that Assad gassed his own people and showed that Hillary Clinton approved delivering Libya's sarin gas to Syrian rebels. A decision in 2012 between the Obama administration and Turkey, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, not to mention the CIA and MI6, according to British intelligence reported by Seymour Hirsch. Footage has also come out of rebels testing this gas on rabbits. Trump at the time echoed the words of none other than Thomas Massey that war with Syria would be horrendous. In 2014, John Kerry declared all chemical weapons were removed from Syria. During the 2015-2016 US election, Clinton pushed the notion of shooting down Russian planes in Syria following Russia's alignment with Syria. Russia hasn't paid any attention to ISIS. They're interested in keeping Assad in power. So I, when I was Secretary of State, advocated and I advocate today a no-fly zone. Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. This would lead to World War III. Trump ran on a non-interventionist platform regarding Syria and said he would not be involved in bombing Syria. In December 2016, Israel and Syria signed a ceasefire that was to put an end to Israel's bombing of government targets in Syria. Israel immediately disobeyed, bombing Syrian airports and government targets while claiming they were targeting terrorists. In March 2017, after Israel bombed several government targets in Syria, Damascus fired back at Israel. No one was killed, but it was considered the most significant escalation of aggression between Israel and Syria to date. While tensions with Russia appear to be calming down, lowering the chances of a world war, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and UN Ambassador Nikki Haley claimed that Assad was no longer their target in Syria and that they did not want to target Assad. As we reported, the next day, John McCain spoke out furiously about the development, saying he was deeply disturbed by the statements. Within three days, the media wants us to believe that Assad, despite being safe, with no motive whatsoever, has decided to gas his own people. Trump and Tillerson both followed the headlines in the news on this story of Syria gassing its own people, saying their views have changed. Trump saying we're now talking about a whole different level in Syria. I don't change. Well, I do change. And I am flexible. And I'm proud of that flexibility. And I will tell you, that attack on children yesterday had a big impact on me. Big impact. That was a horrible, horrible thing. And I've been watching it and seeing it. And it doesn't get any worse than that. And I have that flexibility. And it's very, very possible, and I will tell you, it's already happened, that my attitude toward Syria and Assad has changed very much. Trump is now aligning with John McCain and Lindsey Graham on the issue. There is now a threat of World War III once again. Can't people see the fashion of the week? That anyone who disagrees with the establishment must work for Russia? That the script seemed to have been thrown to the wind and the establishment is desperate to make the script play out all the same? Think about it. The Trump administration after all these years claims they are not interested in overthrowing Assad. So Assad for absolutely no reason decides to gas his own people? It makes absolutely no sense. Russia is adamantly saying that Assad is not responsible. In fact, on April 4th, 2017, the Syrian government bombed a rebel-held warehouse where chemical weapons are produced. 
Rebels used the exact same chemical munitions in 2016 in Aleppo. Now, Rex Tillerson is saying that Russia needs to change their tune regarding Syria immediately. And I, I think further, it is very important that the Russian government consider carefully their continued support for the Assad regime. Assad's role in the future is uncertain, clearly, and it, with the acts that he has taken, it would seem that there would be no role for him to govern the Syrian people. Republicans and Democrats alike are saying that if Russia doesn't want to be hit, they better move their planes and equipment then. What would you tell Donald Trump specifically to do to Syria? Uh, destroy his air power and create a safe zone in Syria where this never happens again. I would so by destroying, you'd have to bomb, we'd have to bomb their airfields, correct? Right. There are Russian planes there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should, they move, should them. move them. This is insanity. This is so incredibly irresponsible. Ron Paul agrees that this is a false flag, much like what we saw in 2013. If Assad was involved in doing this horrible crime, he'd be committing suicide. This is just more fodder for the U.S. to destabilize the Middle East and steal assets while installing their banking systems. The global monetary system needs a war right now, more than ever, as currencies are set to crash across the world. It's the same thing we saw in World War I and World War II. Seeing the footage of children dying in the streets this week has been disgusting. It's sickening, and while the mainstream media uses images of dead children to push their agenda of war and destruction, I refuse to use footage of these dying children to push my point forward. It's incredibly wrong. These are small, innocent human beings we're talking about. Their life snuffed out in seconds. Just know that the media is saying that these dead children are reason to carpet bomb Syria. Yet bombing Syria will kill a hundred times more children. Think about the absurdity. This will cause intense escalation at the same time with Russia. We are living in incredibly dangerous times and we must stop this from happening. Trump is drinking the Kool-Aid of his intel advisors entrenched in the CFR, CIA, deep state, and it puts us all in danger. Where is the anti-war left that went into hiding during Obama's administration while he was drone bombing children? Where's the small government right that have been in hiding since Trump's inauguration? Where's the common sense of common folk hoping to raise children in a safe world? This is a domino effect waiting to happen and we can't afford it. I'm not just talking money-wise, I'm talking about the sake of our very being. The sake of millions of lives. For the sake of humanity as we know it. We must stop this. Thanks for watching everyone, you can check the links below, GoFundMe, Patreon, we can't do it without you. Any donation is very much appreciated and of course check our address for Bitcoin in the description and the comments and on the screen for you to scan if you so please. And we are also offering tickets to the Red Pill Expo which you can buy at the link below. It's a historic event with some of the top names pushing the liberty movement forward. G. Edward Griffin, Robert Kiyosaki, James Corbett, etc, etc, etc. Check the link and hopefully we'll see you there. Until next time, this is Josh Sigurdsson signing out from World Alternative Media. Find the truth, be the change.